Hi everybody, my name is Iris Garcia. I am the North Texas Community Organizer with Plant Parenthood Texas Votes. Thank you so much for joining us for another edition of Power Breakfast. This is where we interview Plant Parenthood Texas Votes PAC endorsed candidates and elected officials who have, a, who have pledged 100% support for Plant Parenthood and who will champion reproductive health and rights. Um, just a reminder that early voting is underway. You can vote early until Friday the 30th or on election day, November 3rd. Make sure to check with your county clerk office to find your nearest polling location and to find your hours. Um, I'm really excited for our power breakfast today. We have Kiki Williams joining us. Kiki Williams is running for House District 54 here in Texas. And Kiki, I'll let you introduce yourself. Hello everyone, how are you? I'm Kiki Williams. I'm your Democratic candidate for the Texas House of Representatives District 54. And first, I would just like to thank Planned Parenthood for allowing me the opportunity today to just share my campaign and my journey with you. Um, my district is stated as House District 54, which is located north of Austin. It includes parts of Bell and the entire Lampasas County. Um, it also includes parts of uh, the largest city here is Colleen, which is located outside of Fort Hood, which is our largest military um, army installation. And it's a district ready to flip. It overlaps two congressional targeted seats in Texas, which are Texas 31 and Texas 25, two amazing candidates, Julie Oliver and Donna Iman. And in 2018, um, the seat that I'm running in was one less than by uh, four, four points. So with these margins and getting the voters out to vote, I know that we're going to flip this, this seat. But if I can just for a moment share just some brief uh, background about myself. I'm originally from Tampa, Florida. I was raised by my grandmother along with my mother's uh, brothers and sisters. Uh, my mother had me at the young age of 15. And uh, it was my mother's brother who served in uh, the war contingency when it first kicked off. And as they were entering Baghdad, he and CNN journalist Michael Kelly, um, they were ambushed and uh, lost their lives in 2003. So that's my affiliation with uh, the Gold Star family. And I also served our country. I answered our nation's calling. And I served 24 years honorably in the United States Army. I supported war contingencies in Iraq, Afghanistan, as well as Kuwait. And I served on humanitarian missions in Africa and Bosnia. And once elected in the Texas House, I'll become the very first female veteran to serve in the Texas House of Representatives. So again, I would like to thank you all for having me today and, and onward to November. <laughs> onward to November. I love that. Thank you so much for introducing yourself. So let's get right into it. Um, my first question is, what is giving you power today? What is giving you the energy to take on today and to take on this race? Well, and looking at the current state of our, our economy and um, as far as my district, I just wanna be the voice for our community because our voice is currently being silenced in Austin. And our current representative voted against Medicaid expansion. And we have too many Texans that lack affordable health care. Uh, we need safe, high quality schools for our kids, whether they're in the classroom or learning online. Uh, the minimum wage hasn't been uh, race since 2009. So we really need uh, individuals who are serving to, to take care of the people and hear the people's struggles and, and just answer the calling of taking care of the constituents here. And I think that I'm the right person to do it for House District 54. I think so too. I love your energy. And um, I want to take it back a little bit. You mentioned your grandma at the beginning um, who took care of three generations in your family, including yourself and your daughter. Can you tell me a little bit more about the influence that has had on your life? Sure, sure. Um, 
my grandmother, uh, I tell people she, she's my favorite person. She's the backbone of my life. Um, she's my favorite girl. And she sacrificed a lot to, to raise me. As I've stated, my mother gave birth to me at the young age of 15 when she barely knew herself. But the strong woman in my grandmother, she took on the responsibility to, to help raise me. So I was her ninth wonder, but I, I didn't feel any different uh, from anyone else. And she's always instilled in me that I can be anything that I wanna be in life. The neighborhood that I grew up in, it was a high crime, low income. Uh, a housing project and my grandmother cleaned housing, houses for a living. Eight kids as well as myself. And you know, when someone didn't have food, they came to our house to eat. When someone missed the school bus, they came to my grandmother to get them to school. Um, she's an amazing woman. Uh, Kids came to our house so that I could tutor them. You know, I'm in elementary school and, and tutoring other kids well ahead of me uh, in school. But as I've stated, I learned from the best and that was my grandmother. And she's always told me to help out when I can. So as far as being a public servant, I was born this way. There was no other job for me. And, and I just thank her for everything that she's instilled in me. But um, every day when I wake up and I call her, she just tells me to remember my, what she's instilled in me. I can be anything that I wanna be and to make sure that I win. And it motivates me more than ever. Wow, your grandmother seems like a really beautiful person, and it really seems like she instilled community, leadership, and so many valuable skills in you. I can really tell. Um, I'm, I'm so glad that you have her in your life. Um, so taking it back to your experience in the Army, um, so you served as a dental assistant in the Army for over 24 years. Um, can you tell us how that experience informs your campaign's priorities, especially when it comes to healthcare access? Well, I would like to clarify something. So I entered our US Army as a private. And while, while serving at Fort Stewart, I was afforded the opportunity, the military terminology is called green to go, where an enlisted soldier can obtain an education um, scholarship to become a commissioned officer. Mm -hmm. So as an enlisted soldier, I was a dental specialist. After uh, receiving the Green to Go scholarship, I was awarded a second lieutenant and I became a commissioned officer. So I, which is, is not the norm, I served in both ranks. I served as an enlisted soldier as well as a commissioned officer. And that together is my 24 years of service. So as a commission officer, I was an adjutant general officer and taking care of soldiers is, there's no other feeling like it because you are responsible for, for their everything as a leader. Mm -hmm. um, while, being, while serving in the US Army, I, I tell people, I never had to worry about access to healthcare 24 hours, seven, seven days a week, I had access to medical dental optometry. And I was able to serve my country without worrying, do I have health care as well as the health care for my daughter? Mm -hmm. And just knowing that I was able to serve my country proudly. But once I retired and hearing of the more than 5 million Texans without health insurance or without insurance. Now that was pre-pandemic. Imagine where we are now. So that is one of the major uh, issues that I will fight for. 
because no one should have to worry about access to health care. And I, I have a really amazing story to share with you on uh, health care. So on day one of early voting, the lines were so long. It was like history here uh, in Colleen, Texas. There were five people to pass out while waiting to exercise their right to vote. Oh my God. Over five people. One of the gentlemen who passed out, he heard me calling for paramedics and dialing 911. This guy yelled out, Kiki, no, no, don't call them. I don't want to bill. I don't have any insurance. Can you imagine how I felt? You know, it's reasons because of that while I'm running, why I'm running for office to take care of people like that gentleman. Mm -hmm. He was passed out, but he had to worry that he didn't have insurance. That's not the country that I served and defended for 24 years. We take care of our own. I still called and they came out and looked him over. And he said, you know, if you look me over, will I have a bill? You know, that, that was so hurtful to me. But we have to take care of our people. Yeah, we really do. That's the reality for so many people that they worry more about like the cost than their actual health, unfortunately. Uh, but hopefully we'll be able to expand medical access across Texas. Um, so let's let's talk specifically about reproductive health care. Um, your district has the highest sexually transmitted infection rate in the state. Uh, why do you think access to preventative care like STI testing and breast and cervical cancer screenings are important specifically to your community? Well, specifically to my community, um, as you stated, Colleen, Texas is within my district. It is the city with the highest STD rate and within the United States is number eight. So in order to uh, fight this, we need to make sure that we have uh, clinics available here within my district. However, we have none. The closest facilities are either Waco or Austin that the individuals have to travel to to receive uh, health care. And when we speak of reproductive health care, individuals immediately go to abortion versus the other uh, resources that are available to them at these clinics. As you stated, the mammograms and the sexual education. And there's that negative stigma when you mention uh, reproductive health care. And we really need to change that in our society because it's a a resource that's very well needed. Definitely, thank you. Um, so Planned Parenthood centers also give non-judgmental care for the LGBTQ plus community. Um, as, as a member of the LGBT community, this is important to me, um, but I, I wanna know like what you will do as a, as a state representative to protect and expand LGBTQ rights as a state representative. Well, I've had several constituent, constituents speak to me regarding this topic. And although the Supreme Court ruled it illegal to discriminate against employees due to their sexual orientation or, or gender, we really need to take it a step further here in Texas. And regarding the LGBTQ community, uh, although some cities have passed uh, laws protecting the community at the state level, we need to expand that and pro provide protections in, in housing, education, and healthcare, and not discriminate against the LGBTQ community. Uh, everyone deserves a, a fair share and, and living their American dream. And um, we just really need to fight at the state level. And, and I plan to uh, protect the LGBTQ community. Thank you so much. That that is really meaningful to me. Um, so, as a veteran, you you know what it takes to be a leader. Um, how will this shape who you are as a legislator in the Texas Capitol? Well, being a veteran, uh, I I do I do have the qualifications to to be a strong leader. But when it comes to uh, 
fighting for veterans, I don't think no one can do it like I can do it. It's in my heart. But there are so many things that we need to look at when, when we speak of, of veterans, because we currently have approximately 22 suicides of our veterans who have served our country so honorably per day. And having access to mental health care here in District 54, I'm told daily that we really need to tackle that issue and fight to decrease the risk of suicide uh, for our veterans. So better access to mental health care, it must be a part of the, the solution to reducing um, the suicides that we're currently facing here in our United States. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely that mental health is so important and it's really hard to access um, in the United States and in Texas. So I really appreciate you uh, mentioning that. Um, so what was the key moment that helped you realize that you wanted to run for office? Within House District, District 54, we have such huge volumes of crime. Um, I don't know if you're aware, but Javier Ambler, the individuals who was killed at the hands of a police officer, uh, Michael Dean, he was killed here in the area at the hands of police of a police officer, as well as James Scott Reed. He was killed during the execution of a no-knock warrant uh, here in Colleen, Texas. And I've worked with all of those families and looking them in the eyes and, and they're still fighting for justice. Michael Dean's mother, this young man was killed while picking up a birthday cake for his daughter, December of last year. And they're still awaiting the video footage of his death. I have a gentleman who have been in jail for over six years and still awaiting a trial. These families should not be going through this. And as I've stated earlier, our voice is not being heard in Austin. And it's story after story, hurt after hurt, pain after pain that these families are suffering, but who's fighting for them? Who's with them hearing their stories? There, there's no one. And after suffering and, and fighting with these families, I knew that I was the one that this is what God, this is the path that he chose for me to travel. And I said, Kiki, you have to do it. And that's what I'm doing. Wow, that's so powerful. I mean, I can really tell that you are running a grassroots campaign, that you're really talking to the voters, to the people that you want to represent in your community. Um, you're really taking the time to listen to the issues that matter to your community. Like, I, I really love that. Um, can you tell us like a little bit more about what you're hearing on the ground from voters? Oh my gosh, it's amazing. It is so beautiful, it's powerful. Um, this district has been a red district for so long and um, the voters are marching to the polls and exercising their right to vote in huge numbers. And um, I, I enjoy, that's my place of duty every day, all day. I'm at the polls. That's what, I'm there speaking with voters and um, <laughs> when they walk up to the lines, they sing the little Drake song, Kiki, we love you, <laughs> you oh know. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't even have to tell them who I am. They run up and they want to take selfies. And when they come out, they have their I voted sticker. It is like the new phase. The, the momentum is so strong. And I feel really confident that we're flipping this seat. Uh, the support is, is genuine. And um, so many of my veterans are coming out and and exercising their right to vote with, with their veteran gear on. And um, I love it. I truly love it. It's, it's no other feeling than just to be a part of this history and turning Texas blue. I cannot wait until November 3rd is here and 
and we're able to celebrate this history making moment. Yes. Oh my God. That, that was so inspiring. I mean, yeah, Texas is really at the brink of doing something historical. We're at the brink of electing a reproductive health majority in our Texas house. Um, how does it feel to be a part of this historical election cycle, like to be a part of a group of people who will have an impact on Texas politics and laws for generations to come? It's, it's amazing. And um, I hate to use race when, when speaking um, general terminology, but I have to because as a black female in politics, which isn't the norm, being part of this history, my entire family, they're rooting for, for me. You know, they're in Florida. Uh, they're just, to include the mayor <laughs> of where I grew up, everyone's rooting for me and I won't disappoint them. But just to be a part of this team, there are so many amazing candidates who are running and they're part of this and we work together daily to make sure that we're lifting each other up as we go out and you know get on that campaign trail and and again i'm just so happy to be a part of it and the people here in in district 54 their their amazing support um, i had like so many contributions like over 15,000 individuals who believe in kiki you know, the, the little girl from Tampa, Florida served her country and now just want to uh, be a part of change and history. There were so many individuals who believe in myself and our campaign and, and I'm just, I'm thrilled and I'm ready to do it. Wow, I'm thrilled too and I'm ready, I'm ready for it. I'm ready for new leadership. <laughs> I'm ready for you to be in the state house. Thank you so much for all of your answers. Um, this has been really great. Um, what can people watching now do to support your campaign? Uh, one, I believe in, in my faith in God. Please keep me in your prayers. Um, and then if you would like to follow my journey, all of my social media handles are uh, Kiki, K-E-K-E-F-O-R, and then Texas spelled out. And my website is Kiki for Texas for if you would like to donate to our campaign, but uh, for the most part, I, I thank you all for your believing in me and uh, for the donors who have contributed to the campaign. I thank you from the bottom of my heart and I look forward to doing amazing things for Texas and, and working with Planned Parenthood to, to change that narrative because it's very needed uh, the services are needed here in District 54. Mm -hmm. And again, I thank you for this amazing opportunity today. And um, let's go make change. Let's go make change. Thank you, Kiki. Um, and we're excited to work for you, with you. Um, we have a link in our bio um, to plug into upcoming volunteer opportunities where you can phone bank and text bank with a PPTV pack. Um, so join us. Uh, we will be making calls for Kiki very soon. Um, and yeah, don't forget to go vote, very importantly. Um, early voting is underway. You can vote early until Friday, the October 30th, and election day is November 3rd. Uh, make sure to check with your county clerk's office to find your nearest polling location and hours. Um, and thank you everyone for watching. Thank you, Kiki, for joining us. You were amazing. Thank you. Thank you.